we're learning life, embracing love, managing marriage, maneuvering in ministry, and managing money. Welcome to the Let's Talk About It podcast. Good morning, good morning, hello, hello, good afternoon, whenever you're listening to this, I want to welcome you to the Let's Talk About It podcast with myself, Tanya Harton. Listen, I want to say thank you to everybody that has been listening to this podcast, for every person that is a part of this podcast. I have seen this podcast grow since June. I thank you, thank you, thank you. I think we're up to 30 something. I'm so excited. I thank you, thank you from podcast to Podbean. I don't know how many on Spotify, but Thank you so much for being a part of this community, uh, for listening to this old girl out of Texas as we learn how to grow together. The things that I share in this, and today it's just going to be me. Uh, you're just getting me today because God has impressed something on my heart. And I want to share this with you. Um, and we're going to talk about it in a minute. But on this podcast, if this is your first time, welcome. Thank you so much for rocking out with me. Um, but the title, the reason for this page is to talk about life, love, marriage, ministry, and money. And today we're going to talk about life. I try to bring different people on with different perspectives, but today I just want to talk to you. I just want to rock out with you and talk about life. I love to share on this platform, on this podcast. I share principles so that you can progress them. And once you progress them, so you could get to a point of pursuing them, you're able to progress, you're able to process and then you're, I'm, I'm sorry, you're able to get the principles. <laughs> I'm going to get it right. We're, you're going to be able to get the principles, be able to process them so that you can progress and then pursue, pursue. There we go. Then pursue. And that's my goal on this page is to, on this channel is to give you those principles. So if you're watching the video, I want to do a shout out to uh, email right now. I'm not showing my face to my podcast listeners because I told you God impressed it on my heart and I'm relaxed. And I want to just kind of talk to you, but to my email bloggers, this is really, especially for you. I started typing and I decided, you know what, I'm going to give them, you know, the full of what God has really, really impressed on my heart to kind of discuss. And it will take me a long time to type this out. And I want to get this information to you sooner than po sooner than later. And so the title and the topic of this is seasons changing. Mm. Seasons changing, seasons changing. You know me, if you got pen and a piece of paper, if you're writing, you know, don't do that. But just kind of leave it on the camera so your mind. I just want to leave some stuff on your mind as you're writing and as you're listening. Uh, is that this this year, I just recently just uh, taught a sermon. And the sermon, sermon was dealing with the season for the underdogs, uh, the season for the underdogs. I did a two-part sermon on that. I dealt with one guy in the Bible by the name of Gideon. And we'll probably talk about him today. And also I dealt with Rahab. Ooh, yeah, the, the prostitute uh, that was in the harlot that was in the Bible and how she was an underdog. But in the end, her, ooh, don't make me, her, her seeds were beyond blessed because she did something that no one else did. But God positioned her in the right position to be able to help the people of Israel. Um take over. So yeah, that's a whole nother subject. Go watch it on my YouTube channel. Great, great, uh, great information that I tried to share with the people. But today we're going to be talking about seasons changing. One thing I realized is that when seasons change, my allergies go on 10. They are on alert. Uh, you, it may be you, you or me and I'm you. Yeah. My allergies go on alert. My knees start to ache. Something starts to happen in my body that is different. Live long enough as grandma say, live long enough, baby, you may experience the same thing, but my allergies go on 10. So I'm talking about as soon as October 1st hit, uh, my allergies went up and I realized this in the natural, I have warning within my body for the seasons changing, but I must say also, Ooh, come here. And the spiritual, I have also throughout the years have felt and felt the shift of seasons changing. What does that look like? What is that? When seasons change, I, I have felt that ugh, something was about to happen in my life. Now, there were times that throughout the years I've been saved um, for real. 
Let, let's get that right. I've been knowing the Lord and had a relationship with them uh, since I was 20 and I'm in my forties now, praise the Lord. And yeah. And I have, I have throughout those years have felt a shift. Even as a teenager, I always had a spirit of discernment. God shared stuff in vision or in dreams with me to know that there was a shift coming. There was something about to go down that was different. And I never understood it. I thought I was weird. I thought something was wrong with me because I can feel the shift. I can even in my now walk in a room and I can sense when something is off, but I've learned to be quiet in the midst of what I sense until God reveals or expose whatever was happening, because sometimes my senses will be off. Come here. Don't think just because you're so connected and so glued to God that you're always right. Cause sometimes it's in your feelings, you're in your feelings, which again creates failure. So you got to make sure that, okay, this is God because my, my sense spiritually is so sensitive to where I can pick up a room. Yeah. And I got to be careful because I don't know what I'm picking up and I got to make sure I don't carry who come here, glory. I don't carry what I have picked up to where I'm going in my next season. Yeah. Chilly, chilly, bang, bang. That I don't carry. We don't carry what we pick up. In our next season, because some of the things that we sense and feel, we got to be able to learn from, too. And so I've learned in in different seasons as I got older, uh, a more seasoned saint in the Lord. I learned how to just let everything play out. Yeah, it'll play out. God will reveal. He he will expose. And eventually it'll happen. So I just learned to kind of be laid back in the spirit when there were times I was on alert of different things happening. So here's the thing. Seasons change. Seasons change. They're never the same. We always have fall. We have winter. We have summer. uh, And we have, what is it? Fall, winter, summer. Yeah, you know the seasons. So seasons change and we only get so many months of those seasons, right? We only get so many months of those seasons. And when they change and they shift, different things change, even within the government for all of my business owners, for within the government, um, the seasons change in the month of October and the month of September where a lot of businesses that, that partner with the government are busy putting in their RFPs, putting in their information because they know come September, uh, we ended up getting a partnership with, um, with, uh, Shepherd city, uh, praise the Lord about that. Yeah. That with shepherds, the city of shepherd, uh, which is an agency that we work with. And so because of that, we have, we were, they harried, they had so many funds that they had to get rid of before October come in and we benefited. Bless the Lord. Okay. I wasn't going there, but yes, I, pra- I praise the Lord for that because here's the thing. They know in October that the seed, that the, there's a shift in the government and that a lot of people think it's going to shut down. We've been doing this for three years and we haven't seen that yet, but what it is, they're in there trying to figure out how much money that they're going to use and what's going to happen. Okay. That's a whole nother story, but even the government seasons change. Even there's a shift and different things have to change. What am I telling you is that there has to be a shift and a change within us every time. If seasons change, that means we got to change. Come here, glory. That means we have to change. Mm. Let me drink on that. Mm -hmm. That means that we must be willing to make a change and understand our different seasons. My husband spoke Sunday. Um, He's preaching a new series. Oh, you got to go listen to it. It's called the... um, Oh my God, I can't think of the name of it, but it's called the, it's a movie, Groundhog Day. It's called the Groundhog Day. And so one of the things that he dealt with was uh, really this, um, how in the month of June, we would always be broke in the month of September. We were hoping and praying that, Lord, they would give us some for anniversary. Uh, And then in the month of January, it was like, carry up, come on, income taxes. And we started making the decision that we're going to learn to stir up for our seasons. Come here. We're going to learn to stir up for our seasons. Because you know your season, you know when there's a shift in your season and you learn that after being seasoned for a while. So about five years ago, I decided to trust my seasons, uh, learn everything I can and listen and learn how to lead while in my season, in my drought, in my moment of drought, in my moment of of where I may feel like a failure. I've learned how to store up in the season. Oh, let's talk about it. I've learned how to store up in my seasons. And so what happens when seasons changes is we feel like 
we failed or we messed up or we didn't prepare for the season. We didn't prepare for what was next. You have summer coming up where you got to buy summer clothes. Some people, you must buy summer clothes and, you know, new bathing suits and different things. Then in the month of winter, in the winter season, you got to buy coats and, you know, boots and all of that because you got to have it prepared for that month. So you start purchasing those things in the month of October or September, whenever, and you start purchasing those things because you realize you got to make sure that you are covered come here or you are prepared for that season. So here's the thing I want to talk about is that how do you get to a point of understanding that there's a season shift? Go down memory lane for a minute in your own life and think about those months or that time when it is a, a time of drought a time of you feel stuck, a time of you feel like, okay, this is the time that we always go through, right? This is the time we always go through. Or this is the time we always want to throw in the towel. I want you to think about that. So I come to encourage you is that when the seasons change, how do you prepare for the season? What will you experience in these seasons? What does that look like in the when this season change? Maybe you don't know what it is in your, when your seasons change. And that's who I come to talk to. How do you prepare and get ready when these things start to happen? How do you know when seasons change, when things start to happen? Number one, you start feeling defeated. You get in this season and you start feeling defeated. You don't feel no way out. My husband and I shared on here how in the month of June, this year, this year, not last year, sugar, just a couple of months ago, how we were within our business. Now, our home was fine, but in our business, there was no, no, no um, businesses coming in. There was no things that would happen. But here's what we did. We learned how to plan for the season. And so before it happened, we made sure that we stirred up. Come here. And I want to teach you how to stir up. So when you start feeling these things, you start making plans for your next season. So we started feeling defeated, right? Number one, you start to feel defeated. After you start to feel defeated, you start to doubt yourself. Lord, am I really supposed to be here? Come here, glory. Am I called here? Am I am I supposed to be in this arena? Lord, am I was I supposed to start supposed to start that job? Was I supposed to get married? Was I supposed to, you know, start you start doubting everything that, that either God told you to do or everything that you decided to do? You start to doubt. Because here's the thing that I learned. Through the seasons over the years, anything that I do for God will last. Everything that I didn't do for God did not last. So anything that I did for God is the only thing that has last and sustained in my life is because it, it was for God. But I had to learn that. Right. I had to learn that. I, I, and, and these are the things. And I'm going to tell you how to get the other parts. Right. So then you start to doubt after you feel defeated and you feel like, oh, my God, here we go again. Why do I feel like this? You got to know that's that's when your season you, you, you get, get ready. That's when you get to praying. That's when you get to, you know, you start soaring up. But this time when that next season come, you're going to be prepared. You're going to be ready because you're going to know I'm not defeated. I'm not doubtful because God, I trust you and we're going to get there. All right. So then you start the process of, OK, you know what? I don't want to be here anymore. I want to get to a point of where I'm coming out of this. I don't want to be stuck no more. That's my husband and I decided. Four years ago, we don't want to keep living from check to check. We don't want to keep repeating the same cycle. We got to do something different. We were in the month of June 2018. I'll never forget it was on vacation, but we knew we had some things that we had to get to get for school. And Lord, here we go again, trying to hustle and bustle to make this school close happen for these children. And here we go again. But we had already paid for vacation from our income tax. But here we go again. My husband said these words and I never get it. He said, baby, we got to do something different. I said, whatever we do, we got to do it afraid as if we never seen it before. Number three, my third point, we start, I was like, we got to do it afraid. You got to start doing whatever it is you have afraid. You have no idea what's going to happen. You have no idea what's going to go down, but God, I'm going to start doing it afraid. And so in that moment in 2018, we were in the car. I don't even know where we went for vacation, but I remember the spot because I felt the shift. Come here. 
I felt the season change. I felt that something was about to happen major in our life. And I told my husband, I think something is major about to go down, but I have no idea. Remind you, everything else was going on around us was falling and wasn't working. People were leaving our church at the time. It was just crazy, but I felt a shift. Come here. I felt a shift about to happen in the month of June, 2018. But we decided, okay, we got to do, we got to do something. So we just started talking about it. You know, how are we going to start doing this thing afraid? You know, what, what, what does it look like? And my husband said these words. He said, God just told me that I'm going to be the middle man. Yeah, I'm going to be the middle man. So I, and I didn't know what that meant. And, and if you see our last videos, we kind of talked about it, how our business got started. But to kind of give you the dip of it. Yeah, we we, we started doing it afraid. So it was like, okay, God, we're going to do it afraid. And so I started writing affirmations. And I started writing these affirmations. Uh, and in those affirmations, I started saying things like, I would never be broke another day in my life. Uh, wealth and riches live in our house. I degree and declare that I am a leader that follows you and that will lead people. I will love God's people. I started saying things like, um, God, uh, um, we are money magnets. Money will chase after us to bring us resources for our city, our community, and our church and our children. I started speaking those things every day. God told me to do it for 14 days because now I'm like, God, I'm gonna do it a faith. And a lot of it was about money. And I didn't want, I didn't, I just felt like I don't want to really talk about money because I don't see that. So I started speaking those things. Lord, I, God, I, we would, um, what I used to say, uh, we will be lenders and not borrowers. Yeah. I start speaking the word of God and decreeing it. And so we started doing it afraid. So we started making moves and doing little things and showing up and networking with other people, being in rooms that made us uncomfortable, being in places that made us uncomfortable. And we did not understand the language. You, if you heard the last, go back and listen to the last, what's the name? So to give you the last podcast about our, our from our turbulence to trusting God from turbulence to trusting God is the title of the podcast so excuse me wow we're in the midst of that we started doing it afraid after you start doing it afraid when the seasons change you start feeling defeated you start doubting but you got to get up out of that get up Start doing something afraid, something that you're passionate about, whatever God give you. I can't tell you that. Uh, join the lines then. You may want, yeah, if you want to be a part of that to kind of learn if you want to start a business. But if it's starting a job, if it's getting that, whatever God has placed on your heart and giving you the passion about. Because when you have passion, you're able to progress. You're able to process. But you got to be able to have passion so that you could pers pursue that thing that you're trying to do. Right. Pursue that thing. After you start doing it afraid, then you start making decisions. I started making decisions, writing the vision down and making it plain so whoever could read it could run with it. And so we sat down and we started writing our vision down for, you know, the church. We ended up changing the logo of the church. We ended up changing different things, kept the name, you know, kept the vision the same because the vision didn't change. God gave us that. We started making some shifts in our church. We started making some shifts in our, in our uh, lives um, by doing business. So we started making decisions. Number four, that's my fourth point. You, you feel defeated. Number one, you start doubt. And then you, number three, you start to doing it afraid. Number four, you start making decisions, man. You don't just sit back anymore when these seasons change and wait for life to hit. You start making decisions before it even happened. Come here. Let me tell you, Paul's Park right here. Walmart right now is already for already ready for Christmas and Thanksgiving. I promise you. Went to a place. I, I don't know where it was, but they had a tree up. Listen, they are already planning making decisions for the seasons to change. But what we do is we don't make plans and decisions for our life, but we'll make plans and decisions for everything else and be prepared for that. We'll be prepared for Christmas. We'll, you know, go do things for, you know, going by and presents and all that, but won't take care of the vision or the ideas that God has given us for our own life, for our own purpose, for our own things that God has called us to do. Come here. We got to be willing to make decisions. After you made decisions, my very last point, you start making decisions, right? And when you're making these decisions, so we start making decisions. 
uh, in, in our church, in a ministry. I started making decisions in Tanya Hart Ministries, which is my business that I have for my book publishing company. I started creating plans for my book publishing company to a point of how can I make sure that I'm able to not just do one person's book, but a group of women books? How am I able to do that? And so I started making plans. I started putting up contracts and making sure I had a invoice and a a setup for people to be able to, you start making decisions, man, and you start believing in it. I told the Lions then, uh, the VIP Lions then this past, we do group sessions bi-weekly. And I told them these words. I say, one thing I learned is that I make sure when I get a pitch for my company, even though it's not here, I have a company that I'm working on, but even though it's not here yet, I already have it in my heart. You got to be willing to have it in your heart when you start making these decisions. And if it's not in your heart, you're not going to persecute, you're not going to pursue the things that God has for you. So I encourage you, make decisions, get it in your heart. After you've made decisions and get it in your heart, trust God. Lastly, I'm done. Trust God in the process. Why do I tell you this real quick? The dude by the name of Gideon, one of the things that Gideon did, just to give you a snippet, Tanya and I's version of this particular topic uh, verse, and I want to say it is in Judges, um, Judges 6. Go read it for yourself. But Gideon, the people of Israel started making decisions the people of Israel had already came out. This is after they came out of the water. This is when Joshua was, you know, king. They didn't made it to the promised land. Well, they get over there to the promised land. And these jokers decide to go back to idolizing Ida, I, Ida, what um uh worshiping idols instead of after what God had done, after God got brought them out, after they walked 40, man, they were they were in the promised land, the very place that they were going to. But afterwards, they went back to doing what they were doing. Don't be that. Don't be the person that go back to your dawn, go back to the things that you were doing. Do things different this time. So Gideon was in a place where the, the Amunite, Amunites, I may have said that wrong, the Minionites, they started coming against the people of Israel. They start coming against them. And so they started taking their food. So Gideon had to go and cover up their food, make sure that their food was, you know, he was trying to stir up some food for the people. And then Gideon thought to himself, I'm not enough. He felt defeated. He started doubting. No, because I'm the youngest in my crew. I, I'm not only, I don't have what I need to be able to, you know, fight against the Ammonites and the Minionites. I, I can't do this and I can't do it by myself. Then he started making decisions. He's, God told him, look, I need you to go get some people. Come rock out with you. And when he got all these people, God said, uh-uh, some of them can't go with you. Come here. Come here. Some of them can't go with you. I need you to find out what they're doing. And Tony Nye's version, go read it for yourself. Find out what they're doing. Uh-uh, they can't go with you. So he got rid of a whole bunch of people that was on that was going to fight with him. Then he got another set of people. God said, uh-uh, take them down to the water. Let them say, uh-uh, they don't let them go either. There are some times in your life that people cannot go with you. They can't go with where you're going. Don't get mad at them when they become a comrade. Don't get mad. And what is a comrade? This is the type of person that is around you only to get what they can from you. Don't get mad at them because they're that type of person. Don't get upset with them when they all also come become a person in your life and a comrade is a person in your life only for a reason just to get they they not there to feed you they just need you come here glory don't get mad at a comrade don't get mad at a person that is a seasoned person in your life this person is only seasoned they only have what they have in common with you only for a season be okay with when you gotta let people go okay uh, the, uh i'm giving points come here the last thing i would say i have somebody that's in your life for a lifetime you gonna have people in your life for a lifetime because they they have something that they know you from and, and they they love you for who you are that's it so it's learning how different things change or different people change in your life as well as your own seasons change i know that's a lot to take up but i want you to marinate on it for a minute seasons change people change people are fickle but you got to know what your season is in order for you to tap into the next thing that God has for you. You got to be willing to know, is this a season where I'm always feeling defeated? What can I do different so that I do not feel this way? Of course, you're going to still feel that way because season change, you're going to go through that. You're going to go through doubt. But once you done went through those two levels, now I need you to get up. Come on here. Chilly, chilly, bang, bang. Come on, get up. Get up and start doing something that you ain't never done before, but you are passionate about. Right now, I'm doing something that I've never done before, but I'm passionate about, and that's women. I'm doing something with women that I've never done before, and I'm passionate about. 
<clears throat> excuse me, you got to be willing to do something different. In the midst of me doing something different, I'm about to open up something next year, 2024. It's something different, it, but I'm planning for it now for me to do it uh, in the month next year, for me to do it next year uh, for my Butterfly Academy mentorship. So I'm planning now. It's different. I'm afraid, but I'm going to do it, right? Now I'm making decisions. We're planning a database for it and, you know, to set up for, you know, women to come on and get all the information I've already given out where they're able to be a part of that and be able to plan out their year and, and execute the very thing that God has already in them, which is called a gift. I'm not telling nobody to use nothing you ain't never used before. I'm telling you, use the very thing that God has given you. Your biggest threat, your biggest thing against the enemy is your gift your gift. Okay. So I got to start making decisions right now. And it's happened in January. I got to make it now. Even in the midst of making it now, I got to trust God. I'm not going to make no move without God. God, do you want it this way? God, are you sure? Okay. God, who do you want? How do you want me to promote this? Okay. God, what am I going to do with this? Okay. God, how long do you want me to do it? How long do you want it to go? God, okay. I'm going to follow every step of God. And when you do that and you trust God, Man, watch your life change forever. My life has changed forever. My life is unrecognizable and it continues to be unrecognizable because I'm con continuing to allow my pain to be turned into passion and my passion be turned into purpose and my purpose be turned into me walking out the plans and the promises that God has for me. God said, you can have anything you want to. You can have a cat on a thousand years. It's up to you. I bet you want it. You got to ask yourself that. So seasons change. Be ready for your season. You not weird. It's not different. It's just changing. And it's okay that your seasons change. And if you are the underdog in your season, baby, the new down is the new up. Come here, T.D. Jakes. The new down is the new up. It is best for you to go down for a minute because when you go down, oh my God, today you're listening to somebody that has been down and have watched the manifestation of God and came up. And here's the thing. This new down is always a roller coaster of seasons that happen in your life where you will be down, but get on your face while you're down. Start planning while you're down. Start preparing while you're down, but being, be ready to, yeah, when you get ready to shot rocket rocket off and go baby be ready to walk into your season that god has designed for you but in that month of june that we had went through that season it was only because we stored up that we were still able to keep thriving so i want to encourage you keep thriving keep moving seasons are always going to change to my email bloggers, thank y'all for rocking out with me every month i share something with you to my podcast listeners at least two to three times a month, I'm sharing some things with you. So I thank you for rocking out. I pray over you. I pray and believe that while you're in your season, if you're there now, that God will be able to open up your eyes and direct you in places that you've never seen before. That we will be able to uh, allow you to be able to walk into your divine destiny. But most of all, to see yourself where you are so that you could be able to say, I'm going to learn right now. I'm going to take notes in everything that I do. If you don't remember anything else, see yourself through God's eyes and not people because you are a product of God's grace and mercy when you do that. Until next time, stay blessed. Y'all stay blessed. Bye-bye.